Can I just reply yeah. to that? The question was, where can you find God the Son in the Bible? That term, God the Son, cannot be found there. Okay. That's what I was looking for. Now, to be called Lord doesn't make you Yahweh. It is a fallacy, a fallacy of logic, to say that exact phrases need to be found in the Bible. And shall I prove it to you? You believe in the Bible, do you not? Can you show me where it says the word Bible in the Bible? It doesn't. So Jesus is saying, I'm going, but when I go, I'm going to send another advocate to you. If he is another advocate, he's not the same person. If we don't need the Son of God to be the same God that he's the Son of. We have one God, which is the Father, and Jesus Christ is the Son of God. All we need to do, if we believe Jesus is the Son of God, and we believe that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. The, the reality is not whether we need another. That's not the question. The question is, does the Bible teach that there is another? Can I ask you a question? Do you worship the same God that Jesus worshipped? Yes. But Jesus never worshipped the triune God. So, shall I address that question? Yes. Okay. Obviously, we, I know that you're a Unitarian, you know that I'm a Trinitarian, sure. um, but for the sake of everyone here, um, this is a, a discussion between a Unitarian and a Christian about the nature of God. Now, one of the key points that I disagree with Unitarianism on, obviously, is the nature of the Trinity. Um, and I think, I think last time we spoke in the bar, it was agreed that if I could show that the Holy Spirit was a person, sure. that that would be a knockdown argument for the Unitarian position. Yeah. Would you agree? I totally agree, but you will never find anybody praying or worshipping this person called the Holy Spirit. Okay. Called the Holy Spirit. So that, to me, would uh, dismiss your argument. Okay. If you're putting that person on par with the Father and the Son, he's never prayed to and he's never worshipped, then no. you, your Trinity fails. I'm sorry. Okay. So, do you, because I'm not being the mic man, you might want to project your voice sure. towards the microphone just when you speak, because you've got a very gentle voice. So, um, right. For the moment, let's just leave whether the Holy Spirit is worshipped to one side. Okay. I, can, I'll, I will demonstrate that later. What I, I want to talk about is whether the Holy Spirit is a person. Okay? Because that is, is fundamental to this whole point. If the, idea, if the Holy Spirit is a person, yeah. that undercuts everything that you, you believe as a Unitarian. Okay. Yeah. okay. So, Christ in John 16... You know exactly where I'm going to go. Um, says this. He says, I have many more things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. But when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will disclose to you what is to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of mine and will disclose it to you. All things that are the Father has are mine. Therefore I said that he takes of mine and will disclose it to you. And in verse 7 it says, But I tell you, it is more advantageous for you that I go away. For if, you do, if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Now that term Helper, yeah. you, do you know what that is in, in the Greek? Paracletos. Paracletos. And what is a paracletos? It's, uh, it's, it's a helper. It's, it's one that comes alongside. And it's one it can be translated that, as helper. Yeah, it's a seat. Counselor. Counselor. Advocate. That's right. Now, Christ says another advocate. Yeah. If the Holy Spirit is described as another advocate and Christ is an advocate, what? Well, my, my, my question, I'll stop on this. Okay, so my question is, is, that, okay, what, is it, what is an advocate? Okay, I'll explain. I mean, what is an advocate? You're suggesting there's two advocates. I believe yes. there is only one advocate. Yep. Uh, I believe Jesus Christ is that advocate. Um, I understand that when Jesus said there'll come another yep. advocate, he's actually talking about himself coming in spirit. So it's another form of himself. Yep. He's, Jesus is called the spirit. Yep. In 2 Corinthians, it talks about Jesus Christ being that spirit. 
because Jesus was made a life-giving spirit. That's why Jesus was able to say, I will come to you. He also says that the Father will come to you. Yep. Now, as a Trinitarian, because you believe all three are separate persons, then you have an issue of all three spirits coming to you. But I believe that the Holy Spirit is the power and presence of the Father that comes through the risen Christ Jesus, that comes to dwell within us. Yep. That's why we can say that Christ is in you, the hope of glory. So my question to you then is, who is in you? Is it the Spirit of Christ in you? Is it the Holy Spirit in you? Or is it the Spirit of the Father? Because there is a scripture in the, in the Gospels that talks about, don't worry about what you will say on that day. The Spirit of your Father will speak through you. Well, I believe the Spirit of the Father will speak through us, through the risen Christ Jesus, who is clothed in that Spirit. Okay, so allow me to reply to this. Firstly, you, you didn't address my point or my question about the Holy Spirit being described as an advocate. Yeah. An advocate, as you well know, is one who speaks on your behalf. Sure. Okay? He's one who stands for you. A helper is someone who helps you in some regard. A counsellor is someone who comes alongside you and gives you counsel. These are personable traits. Yeah. And I would like you to, to deal with that point, not skip it. One second, one second, one second, one second. Now, now you raise the point that in scripture it talks about Christ coming. This is in John 7, John 14, isn't it? Um, you talked about Christ being the one intermediary between man and God. But the title intermediary is different from advocate. The scriptures don't say there's only one advocate. It says Christ is another, that the Holy Spirit is another advocate. It literally says it, and I shall send to you another helper. I shall send to you another advocate. It's the same word. So that means from the lips of Jesus, there is another advocate, not the same one. So we can't interpret when Jesus says that I will come to you and that when the scriptures say that the, the spirit of Christ is with you, we can't interpret that as saying that uh, that identifies who the Holy Spirit is. But obviously, you're quite right to point out that the scripture does demonstrate that in some way the Holy Spirit is the same as Jesus. And this is why Christians talk about one in essence, three in person. Now, it can't be that they are the same person, both me and you reject modalism. That's correct. Yep. So both me and you reject modalism. So when Christ is speaking of another advocate, he can't be speaking of the same person. So what, what is he talking well, he's about? He's not talking about another person. He's talking about another of a similar kind, which is himself coming Sorry, in Sorry, my, my apologies, I misspoke. Not another person, the same person. He can't be speaking of the same person. But in Trinity world, it's a separate person. It, yes, but that, I, mean, I simply misspoke. I'm not, Christ can't be speaking of the same person when he says, I will come to you, and when it says, the Spirit of Christ will be with you. The Holy Spirit, as a Trinitarian, what we believe, and it fits perfectly well with Scripture, is that because when we say that the essence of the three persons is one and the same, we, we mean identically, completely and identically the same. So that when the Holy Spirit is with us, that, that means that the essence of Christ is with us. Because the Holy Spirit has identically the same essence as Christ, just as Christ has identically the same essence as the Father. Now, Christ called the Holy Spirit another advocate. I'd like you to address that point, please. Okay, like I say, it's not another person. What he meant by that was not another person to himself, yep. but another type that he himself will be in spirit, because Jesus is called the Spirit. You have to see that Christ, the risen Christ Jesus, was made a life-giving spirit. So how can this man now come and dwell within us? Well, he can dwell within us in spirit, because he was made that life-giving spirit. Okay. That's, that's, that's it. I, I don't need a separate person alongside Christ. Because if you believe that the Holy Spirit is a separate person to Jesus, then you have a problem when it comes to finding out 
who conceived Jesus Christ in the womb of Mary. Because the Bible says the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary. Now if the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary and caused the conception, the Father of Jesus Christ is the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit. But we don't believe that because we believe the Father is the Father of Jesus, would you say? Can I, can I reply to that? So Christians don't say that the Holy Spirit is the Father of Jesus because the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary. This is kind of, it, it, it's, it's a baffling logic because the Holy Spirit is taking the flesh of Mary and creating a tabernacle from the singular genes of Mary, a tabernacle for the divine Logos. That's what's happening when it says that the Holy Spirit overshadows Mary. But it says that because of this, that which is, in your, that which is within your room shall be called the Son of God. Now, you as a unit, now no, you, it's the one in the same. Now, you believe, you believe as a Unitarian that Christ becomes the Son of God at his baptism. But Christ was declared the Son of God inside the womb of Mary. Yeah. Not later by adoption, but at conception, he is called the Son of God. Yeah. Now, okay. how, could, how do you reconcile okay, well, that with the idea of adoption? Well, the Bible talks about him being declared the Son of God at his resurrection. Yes. Okay. But I certainly wouldn't agree with your point that he was the son of God from all of eternity. And this God the son person came into the womb of Mary and came out as a baby. Baby, that, that is not biblical. Okay. There's nothing in scripture to say that God came into the womb of Mary and came out as a human being. Okay. So allow me to... I believe the begetting took place in the womb of Mary. And for that reason the Son of God, like you say, was brought into existence. Yeah. But how can you be brought into existence if you're already in existence? So, the, what was brought into existence was a human nature. We don't believe that God changes himself into a human. We don't believe that as Christians. We believe as Christians that the divine takes to himself a human nature. That's what, the, all everything that is created that begins that we recognize as, as beginning is the human nature. Okay, so what's the, the, where's the scripture to, to, to... To show that Christ is eternal. Let me well, show you that Christ to, is no, eternal. Was, more specifically, the scripture that says God entered into the womb and came out as a human being. Yeah, it's in, it's in, it's in, John, it's in John chapter 1. The, the, the passage of John chapter 1 says that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning, all things were made by him and nothing in the whole of creation was made without him. And as you well know, it identifies the describing one another. So the word is describing God and God is describing the word. And it is saying that the word was God and the word was with God in the beginning. I wouldn't interpret it that way. Otherwise, you've got God You're arguing with God. against Greek grammar. Well, you've got God with God and that goes against Deuteronomy 6, 4. Yep. That there's only one God. No. In the beginning on, was finish. the Logos. It yep. doesn't say in the beginning was God the Son. In the beginning was the Logos. And the Logos was with God. Now, if you're going to interpret that as in the beginning was Jesus and Jesus was with the Father, then be consistent and say that Jesus is the Father because the Logos is God. No. So the first God there, you're saying is the Father, yes. but the second God, you now change that to be the Son. Because you didn't hear what I said. You're literally arguing against the Greek grammar of the sentence. The Greek grammar of the sentence means that God and Logos, Theos and Logos, in this phrase, God was the Word, or the Word was God, are, are describing one another. They're acting as objectives to one another. So this is separate from the earlier statement, i.e. 1 John 1a, which is that in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God. Proston theon, meaning facing the Father. Okay. So it distinguishes the Word from the Father, from God, but then says that the Word was God and was with God in the beginning and says that that Word was Jesus Christ, which means that Jesus Christ existed before the, the foundations of the world, as he claims to. Well, wisdom was there with God in the beginning, but you don't you don't say that wisdom is a person. We say, actually God. we do. You have to understand the, the personification. No, actually we do. Trinitarians say that the wisdom that is described, uh, I think it's in Proverbs, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that wisdom is the Logos, and that Logos is Christ. And the wisdom, That's exactly and what we wisdom say. dwelt with prudence. Yes. 
So is that another person along with No, because pr- you've got to... But the thing is, when we say someone is a person, we've got to see the interactions okay. of a person. Let me give you an so example. So personification should never be taken literally. No, 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 no. You're, you're just... You're not listening to what I'm saying. When we describe someone as a person, we have to see okay. interactions that we would expect from a person. Me and you are interacting. Sure in a very civilised, personable way. Yeah. We're speaking to one another. It's a change for speakers. Yeah, yeah. it makes a change. Well, it makes a change. It, the, the problems only start when you try to debate Muslims, in my experience. I can debate with everybody else very calmly, but with Muslims it gets a bit awkward. So, in, in my point to you is that we know Christ is a distinct person from the Father. Absolutely. Because yeah. he prays to the Father. Modalism, uh, yep. For Jesus to be praying to himself is clearly not biblical. Right. So we know, we know Christ. So I, I give you an example, something we're going to agree on completely. Father, uh, this demonstrates that Jesus is another person from the Father. So that's Amen. not in dispute. Absolutely. Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you, yeah. even as you have gave him authority over all flesh that to all whom you have given him, he may give eternal life. This is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work which you have given me to do. Now, Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you, before the world was. So Jesus, the scriptures are yeah. saying that the, the, the Logos, which is Jesus Christ, is divine and eternal. That's your interpretation. So how do because you, I believe how do you interpret in this mind phrase? And in the plan of God, Sorry. that Jesus, Sorry. Jesus is Jesus is saying as a person, which I had with you before the world was. That's a person. That's your interpretation? Yes. So let's show, Can I explain the interpretation Yeah, go on, then? go on. You know, the Bible talks about Jesus loving us from the foundation of the world, but we know that we only came about in recent decades. But you have to understand in the mind of God and in the plan of God, things have already taken place from the foundation of the world. Yep. Jesus is the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. But we know that only took place in Calvary. So in the same way Jesus was glorified, well, we know that took place when he was resurrected. That's when the glorification took place, even though it was in the plan and purpose from the beginning. But then if you read further, Jesus talks about who that true God is, and that's the discussion that we're having today. Yeah. Jesus says, this is eternal life, that you may know the only true God. That's the same scripture that any Muslim will tell you here that Christians struggle with. Yeah, they if you've got Jesus saying, you, Father, the only true God, yep. then how can we then add two other people in there? So let, let, me, let me rephrase. The, the reason you're butchering it, sadly, in the same way that the Muslims do, and maybe that's just because no, you debate... No, that's just a clear no, no, no. verse. There's no, no, only me... one way to interpret that. Sorry, can you I finish? Only... Yeah, sure. Let me finish. So you're butchering it in the same way that the Muslims do. Maybe it's because you've debated lots of Muslims and you've heard this argument so many times. But the reality is that passage doesn't sit... Those five words don't sit in isolation. Jesus says, glorify me, Father, with the glory I had, personal possessive, yeah. with you before the foundations of the world. And we can see that in Psalm 110 because David says... The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand. So David recognized Mm. the Messiah as a person even before the incarnation and addresses the Messiah, worships him as Adonai. That's that's a yes yes yes, yes no well ad, all right no, fine that's a big difference because you've got God Almighty no, 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 speaking bro. to Adonai which is the human Messiah you mm. cannot have Adonai speaking to Adonai but he's speaking to him in his present in the Hebrew a thousand Adonai is speaking to Adonai wait wait wait, wait 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 hold Psalms on Psalms 110 Sorry. tells you there who okay. the one true God is and who the Messiah are, are we gonna is. are we gonna do do interruptions yeah, that's fine. are we gonna do interruptions. No, no. All right, so let me finish my point. Sure. Because the fact is, David is speaking in his present. A thousand years before Christ was born, he addresses the Messiah as Adonai. In other words, he's saying that the Messiah is giving a veneration, an honorific, to an existent person. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand side. Yeah. That's, that's how, how he's addressing the Messiah in his present. One thousand years before Christ was born. Now, that fits in with Unitarianism. Uh, we believe that Jesus Christ was raised to the right hand of the Father. Remember, he was given a place of honour. And through that man, God will judge the world. 
That's a Unitarian scripture. It's we don't a, need another Adonai. We don't need another God. One is enough. We do, can, can I just correct something? Because yeah. you, you, you're doing a straw man there. You know very well Christians don't believe in three gods. So stop talking as if we do. But you're talking no, about Adonai I'm sorry. speaking to Adonai. I'm sorry. The, yes, the exactly. Got, one speak person God, is speaking. You don't have one God anymore. No, no, no that's, that's, that's not you logically your head, false. But honestly, anybody outside that's, of your Trinitarian. It's all right, JC. Don't worry. No, 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 no. Bro, if, if you were going to. I'm, I'm trying to have a civil conversation yeah. with you, and that's the well, second so time you've done that. Good. That's the second time you've done that. If you do it a third time, I am going to start interrupting you. So let's keep it civil. Right, so don't do that again. You've interrupted me twice now. Okay. I've let it go twice. Because I know you're a nice man. I know you're a good man. So Don't please. Don't call me good. Only God is good. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's another that's passage we can said, go to. Jesus hey, said, bro, good. bro, God is good. bro, no bro, that's 2.A. Don't, you're testing my patience. <laughs> I'm trying to be patient with you. Let me finish my point. So, so Christ is being addressed in David's present as a person. Yahweh is addressing him as a person. Christ says that he existed before the foundations of the world. But coming back to the Holy Spirit in Romans 8, in Romans 8, and, and I just want to I just want to ask you to be an honest interlocutor sure. in this. Stop talking as if Christians believe in three gods. You know that we don't. It's just a it's just plain point grabbing, point scoring that's only worthy of the dai. It's not worthy of someone who isn't a dai in this park. Only, only, only Dai do that. Be better than the Dai. In Romans 8, it says, The Spirit himself, that's a personal pronoun, testifies. Testifies is the action of a person. With our spirit that we are the children of God, and if children heirs, also heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ. Indeed, if we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. It goes on in verse 26. In the same way, the Spirit also helps our weaknesses, for we do not know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes. Amen. That's communication. Amen. That means the Holy Spirit is a person. But you're assuming the Spirit there is talking about the Holy Spirit. Remember, Jesus is called the Spirit. Go on. He was made that life-giving spirit. Go he's on. the one that intercedes on our behalf because he's the mediator between God and man. The right. man, Christ Jesus, in spirit. I'm going to demonstrate to you he that... He was made a life-giving spirit, Second Corinthians. It's the same point I've made already. I'm going to demonstrate to you that what you're saying doesn't fit with Scripture. Because the, the, in Romans chapter 8, the Holy Spirit is distinguished from Christ himself. It goes on from verse 9. However, you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you, which means that that means that, that the Spirit is divine, something yeah, that absolutely. we agree upon. It has to be divine, yeah. But if anyone does not have the Spirit, Spirit of Christ, Christ, he does not belong to him. Yes. If Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of yeah. sin, Yet the spirit is alive because of righteousness. But if the spirit, the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead. Amen. So what we've got there in scripture is the fact that in some way, the Holy Spirit is identical to Christ. But in some way, the Holy Spirit is distinguished from Christ. We also see in the same passage that the Holy Spirit intercedes to the Father, which means that the Holy Spirit is identical to the Father because he is the Spirit of God, but he is also distinguished from the Father because he intercedes to the Father, which means that this, uh, this fits with a Trinitarian paradigm, that we have one essence that describes them all, and that we have three persons because they okay. interact as an intercessor and an advocate. Okay, so why is the whole Bible, you haven't got anybody ever praying to the Holy Spirit or worshipping the Holy Spirit in the same way that they would pray to the Father or speak to the Son? Okay. I mean, you, there's thousands of places where the Father is prayed to and worshipped. Yes. But you can't find one specific where people pray and worship the Holy Spirit. Yet in today's churches, you go in and they worship the Holy Spirit. Okay. Nobody ever worshipped the presence and power of God in Scripture. Before. Okay. So the thing is, that what I want to point out, bro, is that you're not really engaging in what I'm saying. I have identified from Scripture that the Holy Spirit is described as an intercessor. What is an intercessor? An intercessor is one who speaks on your behalf to another. So he stands between you and the one you, 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 and he speaks on your behalf. 
He's described as an advocate. Christ himself describes the Holy Spirit as an advocate. What is an advocate? An advocate is someone who speaks on your behalf. These are personable traits. Now, you asked about worship. You asked about worship. Now, please note, I am engaging with the points that you're making, but I'm saying, and the camp people can make their own mind up whether you're engaging with what. Because listen to the next bit. It says, but emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant. So it's saying that he was God, that he had equality with God, but then he emptied himself and became a man. And so as a man, God then gives him the authority because he has taken on human nature. So you misunderstood that scripture. To be in the form of God, yes. to be in the image of God, means that you're not God. If you're in the image of something, you can't be the original that you're the image of. Notice it says, let this mind be in you as it was in Christ Jesus. Well, it's not talking about being God. It's talking about you being a servant as a brother or sister in Christ to serve. And he, Jesus didn't try to gain equality with God like Adam did. He, he, he tried to, to, to observe God's authority to become something that he shouldn't have done. The example is for you with the authority God has given you to humble yourself and to serve. There's nothing, this is not talking about Jesus being God Almighty. We, we don't need the Son of God to be the same God that he's the Son of. We have one God which is the Father and Jesus Christ is the Son of God. All we need to do, if we believe Jesus is the Son of God and we believe that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. We don't need God the Son person. There is no God the Son in Scripture. We do not come across that term God the Son or God the Holy Spirit throughout the whole Bible. There is only one true God and that is the Father. Can, can I reply to that? So he said you don't come across the term the Son of God. God the Son, I said. So, let me, let me just demonstrate that he's wrong. God the Son. Yes, I'm going to show you that you're wrong. So, in Luke chapter 1, in Luke chapter 1, reading from verse 39. Now at this time Mary arose and went in a hurry to the hill country to a city called Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. Now remember, Elizabeth was a Jew. She believed in Yahweh, one God. What did she say? When Elizabeth heard Mary's greetings, the baby leapt in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she cried out with a loud voice saying, blessed are you amongst women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how has it happened that the mother of my Lord should come to me? So Elizabeth has said that the mother of her Lord, that's Yahweh, has come to her. Meaning that Mary is the mother of Yahweh. She was 12 years old. Mary was the mother of Yahweh. Unfortunately, we just have to ignore certain rude characters in the park. <laughs> can I just reply yeah. to that? The question was, where can you find God the Son in the Bible? That term, God the Son, cannot be found there. Okay. That's what I was looking for. Now, to be called Lord doesn't make you Yahweh. Jesus Christ was made Lord and Christ. Acts 2.36. Now, he clearly wasn't made God, but he was made Lord. That means to rule. He was given a position of rulership. So, sorry, sorry, we're doing a debate, sir. Sorry. So, so we have to be careful. If you're going to say that Jesus Christ is Yahweh, and we know that the Father is Yahweh, then I, I question how many Yahwehs do you have? Okay, so allow me to address that point. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a fallacy, a fallacy of logic, to say that exact phrases need to be found in the Bible. And shall I prove it to you? You believe in the Bible, do you not? Can you show me where it says the word Bible in the Bible? It doesn't. Can you show me a verse of the Bible that identifies what books should be in the Bible? You don't and you can't. So it is a fallacy to say though, that we need to find the exact phrase or the exact statement to believe in it. It's a total fallacy and it's simply sophism. It's simply playing with words. 
good literature students look at what the Bible teaches and they take everything that the Bible says and they believe it all. And what the Bible says is that there is one God that should be worshipped alone, that there is not any other gods and that the Father is that God, the Son is that God and the Holy Spirit is that God. But the Bible clearly demonstrates that the Son is not the Father and that the Son is not the Holy Spirit and that the Holy Spirit is not the Father. They are distinguishable. Now we Christians capture that picture in the word Trinity, tri-unity, three in person, one in essence. So it's not simply good enough to say, show me this phrase, okay. show me that phrase. Because it's a logic that just doesn't okay. work and you don't even practice it yourself. Can I ask you a question? Do you worship the same God that Jesus worshipped? Yes. But Jesus never worshipped the triune God. So, shall I address that question? Yeah. Okay. So Jesus never worshipped the triune God. That's the argument. What I said earlier in this debate, ladies and gentlemen, is that we Christians worship God the Father through Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit. That is the accurate understanding of Christian worship. Jesus directs us to worship God the Father through him, who, I, who is the great high priest, who stands as the one intermediary between the Father and us. That's why he becomes incarnate. And he says that the Holy Spirit will come and empower us. But Christ commands that we baptize in the name of who? Father, Son and Holy Spirit. That means because baptism is an act of worship, we are worshipping Father, Son and Holy Spirit. It is not simply an act. It is an act of worship. To who? The Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. That's Jesus' command. Yeah, but Jesus himself surely didn't worship himself, did he? When Jesus was worshipping his God, he certainly wasn't okay. worshipping himself. So, he was uh, worshipping the Father, surely. So, allow me... He could have been worshipping the same God that he worshipped, the three-person God. His God was only the Father, one-person God. And that's the same God that, that Jesus said to Mary Magdalene he was going back to. I'm going back to your God and my God, your Father and my Father. Now, Jesus is assuming Mary Magdalene and his God was the same one person. And that's the same God I'm suggesting that you have today, instead of this three-person God that came back many years later through church councils. Let's go back to the same God that he mentioned himself while he was here on earth. So, let me, let me, just, let me just reply to this. Because he says Jesus didn't worship himself. No. But Jesus did accept worship. Jesus says in John chapter 5, listen to this. Truly I say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself unless it is something he sees the Father doing. In other words, he's acting like God. Something sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does, these things the Son also does in like manner. Goes on in verse 21. For just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, even so the Son also gives life to whom he wishes. For not even the Father judges anyone, but he has given all judgment to the Son, so that all will honor the Son even as they honor the Father. So how do you honor the Father? You worship him. And Jesus has just said, you honor the Son as you honor the Father. So how do we honor the Father? We worship him. So therefore, what should we do to the Son? We worship him. That's what Jesus is saying. They're two distinct things, worship and honor. Jesus clearly said the true worshipers, there comes a time where the true worshipers will worship the Father in truth and in spirit. Yeah. It doesn't say the true worshipers will worship a triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Okay, I'll now, can I, go on. Can I reply to that? No, I just okay. one other point yep. about honouring. Yes, you honour the Son just as you honour the Father, because the Son is representing you. 
If you send your son a representing you, and if they honour and listen and obey the son, that's ultimately giving you the respect and to the honour. That is how it's meant. Yeah, because that's part of your you're part of your family. Yeah. That's so it. allow me allow me to reply to that because the brother blatantly contradicts the scripture because he does not believe that you should honor the son as you honor the father because he believes you shouldn't worship the son but you honor the father through worship and also he doesn't understand the word worship the word worship comes from the middle saxon english it comes from the word we are skippe which means to give the due reverence to something so you do it to the queen when you bow. You do it to a police officer when you do what he says and you address him as a police officer. You do it to one another when you shake one another's hand and you greet one another. You give people a due reverence and a due worship. Well, the only due reverence that is directed towards the Father is divine worship. So if Jesus is saying, honour the Son as you honour the Father, that means the worship is the same. The due honour is the same, which means that you worship the Son as God, as you worship the Father as God. Furthermore, Jesus himself accepts the title of God. In the book of John, at the resurrection, so picking up the story from verse 26. After eight days, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, the doors having been shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach here with your fingers and see my hands and reach here your hand and put it in my side and do not be unbelieving but believing. Thomas answered and said to Jesus, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are they who do not, who did not see, but yet believe. Asking questions are not arguments. And what I've noticed is that my brother here is just raising questions as objections. But I am answering those objections. But I'll remind you all, when I pointed out that the Holy Spirit is an intercessor and an advocate, he hasn't answered my question, so I'll ask him again. Sure. I think I did answer is, it, but he is, didn't is an advocate or an intercessor a person? Yes, and Jesus is that mediator. Right. He is that spirit. Right. I told you, Jesus Christ has now come to us in spirit. Right. So he's, he's just agreed that an advocate is a person and that an intercessor is a person. Yeah. But Jesus says, I will send another advocate. If some another type of the no, 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 no. That's what I said earlier. No, hold because on. Jesus I'll read it. To us by spirit. I'll read Jesus it. Jesus is a life giving spirit. I'll read it. This is Jesus' words. Now compare Jesus' words to my interlocutor. Jesus says, But I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you but if i go i yes. will send him to you so jesus is saying i'm going but when i go i'm going to send another advocate to you if he is another advocate he's not the same person which means that your position doesn't fit with scripture because you accept that an advocate is a person, but Jesus is saying the other advocate is another person, not the same person. Uh, can I respond? Yeah. Okay. That's your interpretation. Jesus said that he will send another type of a similar. I've just read it. Himself. What does he say? I just read it. Yeah, yeah you, you read it. But that can be interpreted as an it as well as a he. Okay, remember, he's reading scripture that has been translated by Trinitarians, so they will have a Trinitarian stance. The Holy Spirit in some Bibles is called an it. The presence of God is an it rather than a person. But Jesus Christ is that person. 
okay? But he comes to us in spirit. But while he was here on earth, he had not been made a life-giving spirit. That's why he was able to talk about the other comforter that was going to come. But then he goes on to say that I will come. So how are we going to reconcile the Holy Spirit coming and Jesus Christ coming? Well, Jesus Christ comes because he's clothed in spirit. That's how he dwells within a believer today, by spirit. It's as simple as that. But we don't have two advocates. We have one mediator between God and man. It is the man Christ Jesus. 1 John talks about Jesus Christ being the advocate. We have to reconcile scripture. And I want to say that there is only God, the Father, who's the true God, and Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus Christ has come to reveal him who is true. Who is true? Jesus already told you in 17.3, you, Father, are the only true God. We don't need another person that is also Yahweh. We don't need the Holy Spirit that dwells within the believer through the risen Christ Jesus to be another person. Can we reply to that? The, the reality is not whether we need another. That's not the question. The question is, does the Bible teach that there is another? And as I've demonstrated, Jesus from his own lips says, I'm going away and I'm going to send another advocate. And we've already established that an advocate is a person, which means that this other advocate is another person by definition. And the Holy Spirit is also described as an intercessor in Romans. An intercessor is one who intercedes for you to someone and stands in between an intercessor. That's why we ask people to pray for us. The brother is confusing Christ's role as an intermediary with the Holy Spirit's role as an advocate and intercessor. These two things don't contradict. Christ is the one and only intermediary to the Father. But that does not preclude the Holy Spirit from being another advocate or an intercessor. And advocates and intercessors are persons. Shall we wrap this up? Do you want to have your last word and I'll have my yeah, last one? I just one. want to thank God for his time. You know, it's good to discuss who that one God is. I mean, there's so many uh, teachings out there. Uh, we should stick to scripture as much as possible. We believe that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came to reveal who that only true God is. And we can only get to God through the Messiah. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and life. Nobody gets to God unless you go through me. He clearly is the door. It's only through Jesus' death, burial and resurrection that we can and have eternal life. Uh, we believe that Jesus Christ reigns here today. He's saving souls. Uh, one day the kingdom will be handed back to the Father, that God will be all in all. 1 uh, Corinthians chapter 25. And it's a time that we all look forward to, uh, with millennial reign and then eternal life altogether. I still see Bob as a believer. I believe that he's come out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. He's born again. He's received Christ as his Lord and Saviour. As a Unitarian, I do not have a problem with Trinitarians that pick up their cross, deny themselves and are following. Unfortunately, Trinitarians don't see Unitarians as brothers in Christ, which is disappointing. I just pray that as we uh, draw closer to the end, many of us see through a glass darkly, but I believe God is going to give us more light as we, as we uh, come to the end. So thanks for your time. Well, Thank you very much. That, yeah. So my, my, my closing statement, how much have we got on battery? Do we need to change? Okay. So my closing statement is simply this. Those who follow Unitarianism of every shade and of every aspect, I say to you charitably and in love that you are outside of the truth. And the reason why I say that you are outside of the truth is because if you don't have the right Jesus, you don't have anything at all. Right. Which is so so have anything, what we've got, Christ. ladies and gentlemen, what we've got, ladies and gentlemen, is that Unitarians don't believe in the Jesus of the Bible. The Jesus that describes himself as an eternal being. The Jesus that describes himself as in divine terms. The Jesus that requires your divine worship. 
the Jesus that requires that you worship him as Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Come and stand here, Shamsi. I'll debate you any minute. Come and stand right here, Shamsi. I'll debate you right now. I'll come, come here. Come here. Okay, I'll debate you right now. God bless you. God bless you. I'll debate you right now. 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 God bless you. I'll debate you right now. Uh, I'll debate you right now, Shamsi. I'll debate you right now, Shamsi. I'll debate you right now. Shamsi, don't run away. Sure. Shamsi. I've exposed you. Shamsi. You who can't speak to me, you can't interrupt me, and you did a purpose for not letting Shamsi. me speak to you. Shamsi, you, you interrupted Shamsi. No, 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 you interrupted Shamsi. No, 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 no. Are you denying it now? Are you denying your earlier behavior? My brother was with me. Who is the brother? Who is the and brother? Grab my coat. He was with me. I just said, indeed, he's a Hold on to it, please. Hold on to it. Shamsi, 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 you're running away. Shamsi, you're running away. People who watch the whole full full video, answer me this question. Shamsi, does Allah own everything, Shamsi? Shamsi, why are you running? Why are you running, Shamsi?